All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to JM League Six, round number six. And we've got Wolf. I did not expect to actually. No, I think I did expect to see that from James. Honestly, like his Wolf's been uh, pretty notable, um, and it's been a bit of a mainstay. Actually, I remember back in the day that he always wanted to, to pick up a Wolf with the, the Pokemon trainer, and he would. Uh, you know, he was one of the guys that back when he was on the grind didn't really care that if he'd go 0 2 at a tournament, he just wanted to grind up the wolf, uh, especially at tournaments like Smash and Swanson, things like that, low stake tournaments. So we're seeing it out here again against Spooky's Wario, starting on PS2 here. And this will be definitely one to look out for. I did mention this in the recap, but this will be uh, a bit of a good set to look out for. And I think it'll stand here, especially with this matchup here. You know, you get the, the, uh, the tweak, pretty much, both wolf and uh, Wario here. All right. Nice, keeping things even. But no one with a super clear advantage yet. Although, honestly, I think as time ticks by, Warrior just always has the advantage because now half Waft is online. If you saw from that little flash there on Warrior. And now, yeah, I like that. Just the, the sex kick that, uh, that Wolf has, that neutral air, it's so good for just snuffing out approaches. It's pretty big, it's quite quick, quite active as well, because Warrior does like to jump around. Uh, narrowly missing the down throw into the bike, unfortunately, for Spooky there. But, um, still is ahead by a slight amount, but that can all change, or dangerous uh, tech situation there. We're gonna go unscathed. Alright, bike again. Nice, I love that. Had to air dodge through the bike, and um, Spooky just catching out the landing with the down tilt into the dash attack. Oh, I love that. Oh, that reset would have been massive. Very, very nice. Some good damage and a bit of a bit of minuscule healing from the the bite as well. I think he might have wanted that up air that could to get that half off. But now we got full waft online. That was a really weird interaction. Actually, clanked with the or not clanked but traded with it. All right. Yeah, no stray wolf flashes for you. You're not bro one, but does find a back air. Wolf back air is still super strong and uh, at 140 or whatever, it'll kill even from like almost center stage. But Spooky off to a rock and start on this second set, uh, second game I should say. Oh, that controller I think was in the previous match as well. <laughs> gotta, gotta DC those. Alright. Nice, good catch on the, the neutral tech. That dash tech is so good. Really active, so even if you do get the sour spot, um, yeah, look, you still get stage control, honestly. Um, but James has really brought this back already. 92% on Wario here. Could easily get, yeah, like a Wolf Flash or something, or even like a back air, but not the play. Does get down to a dash attack for it once again. And now here is the money maker. No jump. This is, yeah, this is the big stock. So Spooky is definitely looking for an up to a waft. Ooh, oh, could have gone for a jab block waft there, actually. But. I love that, jumping underneath the Wolf Flash, getting the down tilt dash attack, and now he's looking for more of these landing arrows into the waft. Uh, honestly, uh, yeah, I think it's kind of a, a weird situation now because 84%, nothing is gonna connect um, into the waft for true uh, follow-ups. But finding the Wolf Flash for James here, and uh, he's got a lot of groundwork to make up because he's behind and Spooky still has waft. Alright. Oh. And. Nice. Good grab. A potential edge guard down there? Okay, no. Oh, great bite. Is that just gonna kill him? No, not just yet. Oh, <gasps> no way! Oh, that is so tragic. That is unbelievably tragic. No way! Oh, that's going in a highlight roof for sure. All right. Well, that's uh, that's really sad, honestly, because Spooky was playing so well, and then just the one wolf flash. I mean, look, uh, it's so weird too, because James's wolf flashes were not working at all. Um, but the two that he got were like the two most important ones. That last one, especially, like. I'm surprised that even spiked as well. The the hitbox looked like it would have just sent him outwards instead of getting the spike, but hey. 
that's just how the cookie crumbles sometimes. But Spooky can definitely make this back. Just hopefully uh, isn't too uh, rattled by that. Because um, sometimes it happens. You just got to pick yourself up and proceed on to the next match. All right, but Pokemon Trainer coming out. This is, uh, yeah, Signature James. James not playing around today, it seems like. Which uh, could be unfortunate for Spooky, considering... James was like very close to losing last week, actually. He was on last stock with the, the Mii Sword Fighter against Sample's Nest and managed to claw it back. But, <clears throat> small battlefield, switching to Pokemon Trainer. Let's see how this one goes. Because, um, yeah, if you're, if, you're, if you're James, you're like, okay, that wolf match didn't go the greatest, and he's very lucky that he was able to get on the board from that. So, swapping to PT, I can definitely see as a, a good play here, and he is a point in front as well. So definitely keen to see how Spooky deals with the uh, the three Pokemon here. Um, Ivysaur, James is uh, definitely not a huge proponent of the Ivysaur, does like that, that anti-Ivy propaganda, but is a very solid character, does have great edge guard potential, good confirms, um, sort of does it all honestly. And then Squirtle, you know, the, combo, uh, the combo maker, the money dealer, and uh, Charizard just finishes off the job. But uh, James definitely very proficient with both. Uh, I want to say Charizard is his best character, um, but is definitely proficient with both the Squirtle and the Ivysaur. And as we're seeing the Charizard come out here, the Flare Blitz from across the stage, not going to kill just yet. Charizard got a lot of kill power. That up smash frame, what, six or something? One of the fastest up smashes in the game. But Spooky, not too far. But I definitely think James is going to opt to stay on the Zard. Um, or maybe not actually. Oh, actually, no. He knows there's low percent combos on Charizard, so he probably will opt to stay on the Charizard and uh, keep that uh, that durability, that high livability. As we're seeing here, the bike, the dash attack, not able to seal that. The stock, 156% max rage on the Charizard now. Oh, that's death for sure. Yep, dash attack gonna do it. All right, but 43%, not bad. Does skip maybe like one grab uh, that Squirtle would get. There you go, back in, and already swapped onto the Ivysaur. Yeah, this, this flow chart, this pipeline from Squirtle to the Ivy to Zard is very, very solid. And we're seeing it in full force here, but full Waft is on deck. Spooky could easily uh, equalize this. Oh, but not like that. Unfortunately, didn't get the read on the DI, uh, which is something that Spooky, uh, you know, he knows his confirms really well, and he's very tight with them. But when it comes to DI mix-ups from his opponents, that's like the one point where he can sometimes struggle and really miss these pivotal waft confirms. Alright, good air dodge though, that great drift from Wario. And um, things right back to even, honestly. Oh nice, good snap to the ledge on the Flare Blitz. This is the grab unfortunately, but... Oh, I thought that could have been a grab, honestly, from the ledge, but I guess the South Spot dash attack, not gonna... Oh, again, as well. Because both these guys have a really solid amount of rage. Spooky now with full max rage. Oh, both just sitting in shield. Because, yeah, Charizard... <coughs> Charizard definitely has some good out-of-shield options there, so you definitely want to be careful about touching your shield, and that makes sense for Spooky why he sort of chilled there, but... Both of them going to secure the, the kill on one another. Quick revenge stock for Spooky. And now we are 1-1 one, one apiece. Fourth match not going to connect here. Oh, I love that up air to back air. That was so clean coming out from James there. What the heck? I've never seen Ivysaur pick up the bike like that. That looks so funny with the two vines. Alright, Nair. Oh geez, gotta watch out, that down air. I feel like a down air is definitely coming with Spooky's name on it, but I have to be careful. I think half off is online. I have not been paying attention to the Warriors animations. But definitely could see it sometime soon. Oh, don't go all the way down there. Charizard's gotta come out. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh geez, that bike narrowly saving him from that back air. Alright, down air, not gonna get anything off it, but some good damage and some stage control, some good positioning. Spooky's still on the corner. Uses the bike to fight his way out of it though. His bike play always been immaculate, Spooky. Oh, I thought that bike was just gonna hit Charizard there, but the up B out of shield to seal it out. Yeah, that was really, really nice. James is also just holding onto that option. 
Uh, didn't really use it that entire game, except when he needed it most. And Spooky, yeah, just caught him jumping out of shield there. And um, I think, honestly, that was more of a, a call-out rather than a react, because that was, like, almost perfect, like, the perfect up B. Well, that's going to put James on match point. Um, but it's just still a super competitive set. Like, Spooky's not out of this by any means. Could easily make this back. And... Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely keen to see what he does to adjust here, because something has to change. Um, even if it's just the very slight micro-interactions, because he's been keeping it competitive. It's been equal for the most part. And James has just, just been able to, like, inch out on top a little bit. Uh, even if he can do anything like that first game, of course, different character um, with the wolf. Just got to be careful about overextending, because uh, I, I guess it's more like a wolf thing, right? Like, you can't really die too, too much from overextending against Pokemon Trainer, unless you get sort of, like, reversaled, but Town and City going to be the play here, and I definitely think that's a, a solid one, because Spooky will be killing earlier. I think James will also be killing earlier, but I think Spooky at this point, he's been the, the one to get, like, the super high uh, percentages, but won't even matter, because we have Fox coming out for Drinkwater. So, classic Drinkwater fashion loves the sandbag, so we'll see how fraudulent this fox is today. Um, look, maybe even inspired by Light recently, you know? He's been playing pretty well. Though Light did have like the most crusty DI against like, I think it was Zomba or something. To like lose a set. I don't remember, I don't recall entirely. I've not been keeping up too much with the, the tournaments recently. Um, in America at least. Oh, great, great up tilts. I mean, the, the fact that Fox is a fast faller means that you can just chain a bunch of those together. And, um... Yeah, Fox also just being super light meaning means that, like, every little bit of damage that Spooky can get um, is great. And, of course, since he kills off the side really, really nicely, um, this Fox may see uh, its doom very, very early on. I could easily see, like, a back edge just, like, killing almost, literally right there. Alright, up throw? Yeah, beautiful. One thing I really want to see though is Spooky going out there to edgeguard Fox. Fox has one of the most linear recoveries, has mix-up potential, but one of the most linear recoveries. Um, and like edgeguarding is something that Spooky definitely uh, could catch people off guard with, because traditionally not uh, a player that edgeguards too, too often offs for the ledge trap instead, especially when Bike is present. Okay, yeah, I think honestly even Wario down air could contest the Firefox. Like, Firefox is surprisingly low priority, I want to say, loses to a lot of different things. And with how clean Spooky can be sometimes with his down air edge guards, definitely doable. But really great jump call out uh, with the up air there from James. Okay. Yeah, once again, I mean, even if he threw the bike off stage, but look, doesn't matter. Gets it once again. Yeah, I like that. Look, I guess, you know what? Fair enough. You know what? If Spooky... Oh, jeez, hang on. Oh, he almost ended the entire stock just there. My goodness, the whole match was his for the taking. Um, but yeah, look, I mean, I guess if Spooky is getting a lot of mileage out of these ledge traps, then more power to him, doesn't have to edge guard. But I guess that's, you know, that's, uh, that's confirmation bias, right? It's like, it worked, so don't question it. But in reality, you really should be attempting to, to edge guard Fox. Especially with a character as, uh, as quick and nimble as Warrior. But I guess, you know, the, it is, it can be terrifying with how stubby Warrior can be. Uh, Spooky might not be wanting to risk any trades, but that back air, just on the platform, gonna seal it out. Really, really good stuff from Spooky. Very, very convincing. Like I said, the, uh, the crusty fox. James's fraudulent roster of characters continues to grow, and uh, we'll see who he switches to next. Um, but yeah, it very much is like a James Bathgate kind of thing, you know, loves to get his sets in, loves to make long sets, loves to keep it, uh, loves to, to throw for content at times, you know, had a, especially with you know, those wolf flashes in game one, eventually got the one, like, eventually got the clip at the end, and then, like, played really cleanly in game two, honestly, uh, with the Pokemon trainer, and then now uh, sandbagging for a little bit, so you could probably expect Spooky to be on the brink of a reverse 3-0, uh, but we'll just have to see which character James wants to pull out next. Alright. Oh. 
Pikmin series, we get environmental noises? Yeah, we are. Get that nice ASMR. Could also push the mic even closer. And then we get more of that, that ASMR with these environmental noises. Alright, I'm not gonna do that. I'll, I'll move it away for you guys. Alright. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, no, never mind. The warrior and the Pokemon trainer. Okay, so this is... Okay, this could also be the set. This is very, very exciting. Alright, yeah, just get rid of all music. Just keep them laser focused into the game. We've got the battlefield pick, which uh, is a very, very strong pick for, for James here for Pokemon Trainer. But in the same way, Spooky has made a lot of waves on the stage, has gotten some really good clips, has gotten some really great conversions as well. Uh, and those platforms are going to do both him and James quite well. So it'll be interesting to see who uses this better. Um, but considering this is, you know, James's counter pick, maybe he is uh, more confident going at this. He's adjusted his mindset for Battlefield in this case. Um, you know, maybe he was using the, uh, maybe James was using the uh, the Proto Bantam strat. You know, switching off of his main for a game just to throw off his opponent and readjust the the muscle memory so that he can come in with a fresh Pokemon trainer. But it doesn't seem to like doesn't seem like it's working out too too well. Although speaking on the ledge, anything could happen here. Oh, that was such good, like, scouting of Spooky's movement there, but James not able to get any massive punish, but does find a stray landing up air. Not without taking, like, 109, though. This is pretty dicey for him, but it's quite even. Actually, it's really even. 113 apiece, my goodness. Oh, good trade. Nice, I love that. Opted for the low recovery there. All right, back throw. That should seal it out. Yeah. Getting a few pummels there for good measure too. And now, oh, dash attack. Okay, there you go. Down dash attack. Good, good stuff coming out from Spooky here. Um, what's interesting too to note, I actually didn't notice this. Uh, oh, actually, I just thought of this. Since I'm pretty sure James actually plays with his own heads, like headphones and like music. So the fact that he has swapped to environmental noises, I think is specifically just to mess with Spooky because there is no. Um, there's no music for him because I think he's just playing with the game audio. So <laughs> it's quite funny actually, if uh, if James is playing with uh, his own his own music. All right. Oh, massive, massive. Oh, Squirtle was a bit too small there. That up tilt not going to connect. Thought maybe we could see a jab lock as well. Oh, massive damage that down throw up air. But you really can't count Spooky out, especially with Waft. Might be looking for it there. No bike. All right, does snap to ledge. Really good. Oh, beautiful. Yep. Nice. Really, really great catch on the roll in there. That's something that Spooky looks in, uh, looks for a lot. So, I think if James wants to... Oh my goodness, hang on. 60%? Dude, these platforms. This is so good for Spooky. Very good play here. Great DI on the up throw. Yeah, James is going to need another one of those, or at least, uh, at least on the platform to even have a chance of killing, and obviously if he manages to get it... Oh, is he dead? Yeah, the bike to finish things off. Beautiful. I was going to say, James definitely needed that, uh, that top platform up throw if he wanted even a, a chance of killing. Um, yeah, really amazing stuff from Spooky there. That was such a good... Um, such a good adaptation, honestly, compared to the previous um, Pokemon Trainer Warrior match. Yeah, and it's just quiet here. It was so good. Dude, two for the price of one. Amazing. So now we're going to game five, which is uh, exactly how I expected this set to go, albeit not from the the sandbag pick. Um, I mean, the Wolf is honestly like a very good pick from James. Uh, and I think it was very good for him to start off the set with the Wolf as like, you know, see how it goes. Um, so there, there's no issues there, but that Fox, that Fox in game three, I'm glad that was effectively three stocked. My goodness. But let's see what the uh, the play is for this game five. James does have the full counter pick. I honestly see them go back to Battlefield. Or maybe not, actually. Town and City. Oh, really? Town and City. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, if he sticks to the Pokemon trainer, though. Oh, what's the wolf on Town and City? Okay. Yeah, look. Uh, Wolf in Town and City is also just really, really strong, so this is not a bad pick by any means. Alright. 
Let's see how this goes. Game five. Nice, good back here just to kick things off. Quite literally, honestly. Alright, Spooky starting a little something of his own here. Gets, uh, I think that might have been a bit of a snapback moment. Under the controller there, getting the beer reverse bite. Not even beer reverse, I guess just turnaround bite, actually. Alright. Does grab though. Nice, good two up airs. Oh, that was so good, just scouting him on the landing, but not able to, to find the punish. And that wolf flash once again. Okay, now he's looking a bit like Bro One with these uh with these wolf flash punishes. Wolf flash punishes just like raw. And the up as well to try to cross him up. Um, it's relatively safe though. Ooh, I thought a down smash was coming out there, but finds an up smash regardless. Back air. Oh, great chomp. Nice, okay, yeah, doesn't want to get called out like he did in game one there. Uh, but even if he did, that platform was there to save him, I think. Uh, unless he got the spike box, which might have just killed him off the top. But... Wait, that was some really, like, cute movement there. That wall jump, um... Reflector was actually so, so slick. Uh, it didn't do anything, but it, look, it looked very pretty. I'll give you that. Uh, but even here, just, you know, having the wolf to, to deal with the, the bike ledge trap um, is definitely a bit of a, a bit of a meta play here, especially considering how I was mentioning earlier that Spooky definitely opts for, opts for ledge trap, especially with the bike. So that could definitely do James some favors here. But Max Rage hasn't lost his stock just yet. Nice, and the Chomp bite going to seal it out. Um, Oh, okay, up air. Nice, getting the snare. So yeah, look, even things right back up. Um, and Spooky still has the waft, which is really good here, honestly. Oh, that was such a great call out. Really good read, that up tilt into the, uh, oh, I guess, what was it? The, um, I didn't even notice, but it's like the, the, the Nairn just to wait. He waited for that air dodge, gets the up tilt, gets the waft, and now he's looking really, really pretty. This reverse 3 0 is in his clutches right now. Wolf Flash, not what you want to see there, but probably, probably one of the better Wolf Flashes we've seen, and even that one too, gone completely unpunished. But James still in the corner right now. Up B back to stage, gotta watch out. That was the hardest roll read, and it almost worked too. Alright, pivotal moment here for Spooky back air. Oh, went a bit too low that time. Does have the bike to recover, however. James stuck on this platform. Got to be careful. Alright, Nair. This could be massive for Spooky here. Really good Tomahawk forward throw. Oh, wow. Okay, that wasn't true. That could have been curtains there. Oh, geez, that wall flash once again. James is going to be very careful about you picking his options here. That wall flash. Okay, you know what? That was a good option, honestly. Like, wolf forward smash is super safe. Reflector? Oh, that might be it. Oh, the bike just to finish things off. No, I'm a liar. I can't believe that didn't kill. With like the rage as well. I guess the bike doesn't really get affected by rage. Uh, by rage. And Wolf is uh, somewhat heavy, but this back throw not going to take it out just yet. Surely. All right, Uppy's on the stage, looking really hard and just going to take it out like that. Spooky with the reverse 3-0. Really great stuff coming out from. Uh, from yeah, the JML newcomer, and it, that's his, uh, that's an upset here. Look, seed disparity of one. James was the highest seeded player, um, but a really good set nonetheless. So uh, yeah, really good stuff. What did you think? I didn't see anything. You didn't see? Well, you should have. That's on you.